The growth and impact of a popular derivative security known as credit default swaps have captured financial headlines this year. Many people have heard of them, but are lost as to what they are, why they're relevant, and their impact on financial markets. My name is Jeff Block with Thompson Financial Strategic Research Group to provide basic insight to these opaque securities. First, a credit default swap, also known as a CDS, is an over-the-counter financial contract between two parties that is used to trade the credit risk of a specific company. In its most simple form, the buyer of a CDS is buying protection from the risk that a company might not be able to meet its interest and principal payments on its outstanding bonds. Now, if the credit risk of a company increases for some fundamental reason, the price of protection increases as well. Think of the concept of buying auto insurance. If you're a careless driver prone to accidents, you can expect your annual premium to increase. Well, the pricing structure of a credit default swap is similar. An interesting thing about credit default swaps is that the issuing company is actually not directly involved in the trades. The major participants are usually banks, portfolio managers, and traders. The other side of credit default swap trade, known as the counterparty, is the seller, and he assumes the risk that a company may not be able to make its payment obligations to bondholders. Similar to an insurance company, the seller of a credit default swap will receive a fee or a premium for taking this risk. The greater the risk of the company defaulting on payments, the greater the premium. If the company experiences a credit event such as becoming insolvent, then the CDS buyer will be compensated. Let me emphasize that the CDS market is not just for hedgers looking for protection. Traders will use these contracts to speculate the future credit of a company. If you buy a CDS contract, you are essentially short the credit. The only way you make money is if the premium moves higher, and that will happen if the credit concerns of the company increase. Conversely, if you sell a CDS contract, you are long the credit. The trader is not concerned with the risk that the issuing company will experience a credit event, and the compensation is the premium paid to the seller by the CDS buyer. Let me add that the trading behavior of credit default swaps may indicate a leak in material information that is yet to be picked up on the radar of the equity and option markets. It's prudent for corporations to keep an eye on credit default swaps on their issues prior to material announcements. It also indicates traders' view on the health of the company's credit. The credit default swap market has increased in popularity over the past several years, exponentially I might add, as an estimated notional value near $46 trillion. That's almost five times the size of the U.S. national debt. One thing to note is the CDS market is unregulated and the industry must police itself something that has drawn the ire of U.S. lawmakers, specifically U.S. Senator Charles Schumer. There are also indices on credit default swaps that are terrific barometers for the health of the credit markets called the CDX indices. The CDX indices appear to have an inverse correlation with the M&A market. The higher the indices move indicates uneasiness in the credit markets, which have an inverse effect on M&A activity. The higher the indices go, the less deal activity may occur because of an unfavorable environment for financing. That's all for now. My name is Jeff Block with Thompson Financial. Thank you for listening.